Last week marked the 13-year anniversary of the biggest mistake of my life, so far. Recognizing that the monetary system was driving us to extinction, I opted out of the monetary system on May 1st, the day the world acknowledges and celebrates workers. And by the world, I mean countries besides the United States. I continue working, albeit off-campus, for no pay. I continue educating the few people willing to pay attention to abrupt, irreversible climate change. It hasn't gone well. The response included a coordinated defamation campaign that caused me to be effectively erased from society. Undeterred, I continue anyway. When all has been lost, I see no reason to stop. One of the ways I continue to educate the willing is with an audio course in conservation biology. A description and the ability to sign up for the course can be found directly beneath this video. This video addresses three questions. What action is relevant? What does right action look like? And what would you have me do, short of getting arrested or setting myself on fire? Neither of those tactics has changed policy, laws, or public opinion in the past. The idea of setting myself on fire reminds me of an old joke. If I light a man a fire, it'll keep him warm for the rest of the night. If I light a man a fire, it'll keep him warm for the rest of his short life. Phrasing matters. An idea that leads to email messages I recently received from two people. I've called them Bill 1 and Bill 2. Everybody is Bill, as I pointed out in this space. The short version of the story about Bill's name goes like this. My name is Guy. That's the name I was given at birth. Guy is the American pronunciation of Guy. Guy is short for Guillaume, the French version of the English name William. Bill is short for William. Thus, Guy is Guy is William is Bill. You can call me Bill. I refer to most people in this space as Bill. The exception is public figures for whom I use their actual names. My final high school principal also taught a course in the humanities. He was intent upon calling male individuals in his classes by a name they didn't prefer. Students made, named Mike, he called Michael. Students who preferred, preferred Chuck or Charlie, he called Charles. Whether the student chose the more formal or the less formal name, the principal used the opposite. He hesitated every time he called my name. He couldn't come up with a different name for me besides Guy. Apparently, he didn't know about Guillaume, much less Bill. The video in this space that triggered email messages from Bill 1 and Bill 2 was titled, Paid Climate Scientists to Go Halfway, Finally. In this video, I used Peter Kalmus as an example of a paid climate scientist who is lying to us about abrupt, irreversible climate change. Kalmus is hardly alone, of course. I finished my video with these lines. Quote, so many questions, so little time. I expect to receive no relevant answers from the likes of Kalmus and reporters working for the corporate media. End quote. The response? The aforementioned email messages from Bill 1 and Bill 2. Bill 1 wrote this and much more in his first message to me. Quote, yes, hope is not a plan. Yes, we may all be doomed. Yes, we may be in an abrupt, irreversible situation. Yes to everything else you state. But why so hard on Peter Kalmus? The guy has been warning for decades, just like you have. He's on the same side. He doesn't believe that he's lying. He's not ignorant. He likely agrees with you, but still wants to believe that we're not all doomed. Yes, again, hope is not a plan, but he's not giving up, as probably no one should. You have given up and believe it to be justified, and it may well be. But still, there may be some hope. There may be why so hard on a guy who put himself out there to be arrested, which is not any fun? He's still trying. He's on the right side of things. End quote. <sighs> My response, in part, included these lines. Quote, I have not given up. I continue to educate people about evidence. In return, I have been eliminated from society. Why? Because I tell the truth. Apparently, that's enough. End quote. Bill 1 responded repeatedly with more nonsense. I simply put the entire email thread into my folder labeled crazy. After all, I could spend every moment of every day responding to incorrect accusations from uninformed idiots. As Southwestern writer Edward Abbey pointed out many years ago, quote, life is too short for grief, or regret, or bullshit, end quote. Most of my incoming email messages qualify as bullshit. Responding to them rarely informs the, the, the reader while wasting my precious time. 
The next day, Bill too showed up. He wrote, in part, quote, Why don't you advocate that we do something? I believe that stratospheric aerosol injection is our best hope. Below is a open letter I wrote that I hope will inspire you to advocate for action. End quote. The subsequent open letter is far too long and irrelevant to bother with, so I won't. Instead, I responded to Bill too with, quote, I'm doing something important. I'm pointing out evidence and encouraging people to live in alignment with this evidence. Unlike most people, I'm not lying. I'm doing what government officials, the corporate media, and paid climate scientists refuse to, de to do. To you, this is doing nothing. You encourage an expensive strategy that abundant evidence indicates will fail. I have pointed out the abundant evidence indicating failure of stratospheric aerosol injection for nearly seven years for free. You haven't noticed. I support an inexpensive framework supported by evidence. Mere reflection, which you can find at mere.org. You haven't noticed. You will undoubtedly respond with nonsense. I likely will not waste my time with an additional response to you. My life is too short for that. End quote. As I've pointed out repeatedly in this space, my primary computer is a cellular telephone. Responding to willfully uninformed people is a burden carried out one keystroke at a time, one tap of the finger at a time. That I respond at all is of questionable intelligence on my part. Yet, my commitment to educating the unwilling continues unimpeded by ignorance and mean-spirited commentary. Why? Maybe I'm the stupid one, after all. Please don't feel compelled to respond to that comment with an email message. As stupid as I seem to be, at least I've not given up, whatever that means in the face of abrupt, irreversible climate change. Even the most conservative of scientific sources, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, admitted in two separate reports released a few years ago that climate change is both abrupt and irreversible. Rather than giving up, I remain an educator. I clearly triggered Bills 1 and 2 by educating them about abrupt, irreversible climate change. This is difficult information to accept. Indeed, anything worth learning is accompanied by discomfort. On the other hand, acceptance remains a gift. In addition to educating anybody who will read or listen, I continue to point toward actions that are relevant in the face of near-term loss of habitat for humans on Earth. I continue to differentiate between action for the sake of seeking attention and the cleverer approach, right action. I continue to illustrate right action by the way I choose to live. Please join me. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing to this channel. If you subscribe, please click the bell so you'll be notified about future videos. Feel free to share this video. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly, though, thanks for watching.